Hey Amen. When you're a real one like me, you try your best to suppress the memories of Cartoon Cable Network's dark ages. Because we all know that they all had them, with a few examples being Nick in 2009, Disney Channel after 2013, and Cartoon Network with Seeing Real. We just want to remember the good times, you know? However, sometimes people had to come around and remind us that we always didn't have it good. Like an old head telling you that you had to go outside to talk to people when he doesn't know that you've been sharing memes with a group chat filled with people you never met for two hours. But going back to Cartoon Network, 2008 to 2010 was filled with some acquired series from different countries that made you react in. Oh man, this is on again? I just want to watch Chowder. Or Flapjack. And that list includes shows like Chop Saki Chooks, League of Super Evil, and Hero 108. Whether these shows were good to you or not is completely subjective, but the grand majority had a negative response to them. And another show included in that list is the one I'm speaking on today. So without any further ado, <clears throat> do any of y'all remember? Fucking skunk foo? That's right, skunk foo. This isn't a fever dream, and you're not the only one remembering it. I'm literally showing it to you right now. Don't leave no comments like that, little bitch. The show originated from Europe, from a studio that's only notable for works in that area. Blah, blah, syndication happens, and it makes it over to the States. On Kids WB, September 22nd, 2007. Then president of Cartoon Network Stuart Schneider was like, Oh damn, is that a fucking panda in that show? Kung Fu Panda's about to come out soon. Maybe we can take this show and trick these kids. Boom. It was on Cartoon Network the next year for that exact reason. Schneider was acquiring a bunch of shows at that time anyway, so this doesn't at all surprise me. You guys like Total Drama Island, right? Thank him for that. The show is about this panda and dragon being friends and all, until God was like, Yo, Dragon, you's a bitch. And banished him or something. Now he seeks revenge through turf wars after recruiting a bunch of primates to do his dirty work. While Panda makes sure to stop him every step of the way with this little skunk nigga randomly showing up as their wild card. That is literally the best I can do to summarize this, considering that there's no pilot origin episode or anything like that. I just went off the intro alone which I hilariously figured out to know that fucking Ghostface Killer of the Wu-Tang Clan did the vocals of the non-American version. Yo, skunk fool, balancing the earths and the heavens with an old wise panda and a whole pack of regions. Fox, rabbit, pig, snake, and killer bees. Duck, crane, tiger, fighting off ninja monkeys and bad boys. Like, what the hell? Why couldn't we get this version? It's way better than what we got. <laughs> This some bullshit. But yeah, anyways, the show is basically niggas versus coons. Ninjas versus monkeys. I'm not sure which one of those sounded better. Filled with some diverse characters such as pig, snake, frog, tiger, mantis, ox and bird. I said that first, not interesting. The true main events to the series though would have to be panda, rabbit, fox, for obvious reasons, and skunk. Our main character is the most adorable, childlike, piece of shit main character I've ever seen in my life. Well, 90% of the characters are unlikable anyway, but every conflict is his fault. And by the climax, he just ends up fixing it. And although I just explained the plot to like 30 cartoons, this one just comes off wrong to me for some reason. He's so damn annoying to my adult mind that I can't stand it. Skunk literally be in the episode like, what? I wasn't supposed to do that thing you told me not to do, but ends up prevailing anyway despite doing the bad moral. It's so ass backwards, but I've seen more terrible shows elsewhere. His redemption to his character is the fact that he's literally the only reason that the good guys are winning their battles. Like Skunk is literally the only hope dead ass, just like they say in the intro. Now trapped in his icy prison, he plots to destroy us. Our only hope might be my pupil skunk. And he has this super powerful technique that no one can withstand that he can only do when he's embarrassed. Uh, I'm gonna s relax. So yeah, fuck skunk. The only people who might find him likable is the far fetish community. So let's see who else we got. Uh, Oh yeah, Vegeta Bunny. 
So his character is the arrogant, cocky, edgy, piece of shit, dumbass trope that middle schoolers should love to stand. He's the toughest of the bunch, which isn't saying that much because, you know, skunk. But he's useful where it counts. He has this little walk cycle where he puffs out his chest and takes the slowest steps forward, which is very humorous to me. And his only weakness would have to be his undying love for Fox. Which is crazy if you think about it. Fuck all that Zootopia shit. Skunk Fu had the original OTP. But y'all wasn't outside for that, was y'all? Anyway, Fox is literally furry bait. Well, the whole show is, but she's the only woman in the show besides this old duck. And she just so happens to be sexualized every time she's on screen. <coughs> ah, Fox, we were uh, just talking about you. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I can be very persuasive. Well, I am. Uh... Come on, big guy. <laughs> Come on now, the writers knew what they were doing. I ain't gotta spell it out for you. Here, let me help you real quick. Now, let's see here. Hmm. I was expecting a lot more, to be honest. Here's the best art of her. Make this the new drawing meme on Twitter if you want to see better. Besides that, she's actually one of the most tolerable characters of the show. Being the only character that actually wants to get shit done, combined with her skills in combat. And last but not least, Panda, the wise Kung Fu master. Y'all know what this character is, so I'm not gonna give you a summary. But he's the only one keeping order around this place, filled with these dumbass animals. But remember, everything is not on peaches and cream, cause the antagonists, Baboon, and the Monkey Ninjas are here to be the monster of the week. Every week! There is not a single other villain besides them. And I know what you're thinking, isn't it boring fighting the same people over and over again? And the answer of course is, yes. But the writers have decided to answer this with giving them a power boost whenever they feel like it. There will be an entire episode where they're completely destroying them without any effort, sometimes even by themselves. Then boom, out of the blue. Oh no, we're surrounded. There's no way we can win. Oh, I just hate it. Don't do that. Watching Skunk Fu nowadays in general will give off a Saturday morning cartoon vibe. You know, like those cartoons that don't matter. The ones where you feel like you're wasting your time expecting something different to happen. You might think you liked it for nostalgia's sake. Or you're just a furry. But it just ends up being a chore to watch. Which is fine, I guess. Because they only had one season. I mean, thank God they didn't try to drag this shit out. But hey, it gave the voice actor of Skunk something to do before he ended up voice acting the main character from the hit French cartoon, Wack Fu. Oh hey, they also have Fu in the title, look at that. But I mean, if you are gonna make a show with furry bait, at least make it good. I mean, look at Sonic fans for example. They're all weird, but at least their shows are okay. I was grasping for straws to even make this video due to the fact that there's no HD footage available on the internet. Nor will there ever be because the only media that they put out was DVDs with only a few episodes on it. That shit was on Netflix too and apparently that shit looks like ass compared to most TV rips. The show was made with a lineless art style for the characters and I can't tell you how awful that looks when you're watching it in 360p. Mr. Nostalgia is usually the plug for everything too and even he deemed it as lost media. So what you're seeing is literally the best I could do. Sorry. Like I said, Skunk Fu had one season which consisted of 26 two-part episodes, making for 52 individual segments. Nothing ended on a high note, there was no storyline, no thrilling conclusion, no character development, no nothing. I didn't even take the time to tell you about the creator of the show because there's literally nothing there. The show just dipped and everyone forgot about it, as they should. Which is a shame to say, considering that Cartoon Network kinda went all in with it, making bumpers and shit. But yeah, Skunk Fu is some skunk poo poo doo doo nigga. Yeah, Ruby, your life is back, baby. Get ready for my next upload in three months, bruh. A. Men.